Just prior to the events in our reading today, Simon, Andrew, James and John heard that command to follow me and they did. Probably most of us today would think of a hundred reasons why we just put, couldn't possibly do as they did. But I wonder if we're looking at those words just too narrowly. Follow me isn't necessarily about physically uprooting ourselves, nor is it restricted to just our religious beliefs or the particular way that we choose to live our lives. What if the follow me invitation is more about stepping into a more fully rounded life. What if we replace our fear of breaking out of our comfort zone with a sense of urgency and excitement, thrill and adventure as we follow me? Using Sarah's method of replacing the got to with get to. For example, I get to step outside the box because I feel inside of me that it just must be done. Or swapping that, oh, we've always done things that way with, I'm going to try something new because I want to follow where God is going. And where are we going? What a question that is. If we have learned anything in this last year, it is that we have no idea what the next day will bring. We've been exposed to this now for so long, even the fearful have become somewhat inured to it, maybe even a little blasé. COVID-19 has brought suffering and death to millions around the globe and there is still some way to go. Our faith may have wavered at times and we may think that God is nowhere to be seen. That is a very dark place, a nighttime place, a desert place. So what do we do when it seems that God has sneaked off and left us alone? I'd like you to consider the desert place where on that day, described in our gospel reading, Jesus went out in the early morning to pray. He went out of sight out of touch, no mobile phones. And his disciples had to search high and low to reach out for him. Did they look in the safety of the town walls? Did they stick to the familiarity of the neighbors' houses? Was he standing behind the door? Finally, they went out into the desert and it was there that they found him. We are in a desert place right now, there's no doubt about that, but think of this. Disciples found him in the desert place. Regardless of the darkness, we are never left alone, but sometimes we do have to actively search for him, to reach for him. His withdrawal to the desert place was really an invitation for us to move into a new place. He calls us out of the comfort of our homes into the vulnerability of the wilderness, a deserted place when all we can do is pray. Now, most of us struggle with that thought. We tend to avoid the desert place. There's nowhere to hide there, and we have to face up to who we are and who we are not. We begin to realise that our successes, possessions and accomplishments don't actually count for much. In that desert place, we have to concede that all we can do is pray. In that desert place, we have to concede that we are not in control. And that is the point of personal revelation and a massive springboard to better things. When all our presuppositions about what our life should look like are stripped bare, then we know absolutely crystal clear, it is completely about follow me. 
in the desert place, there is only God. Jesus draws us there to take us deeper into the heart of God, into falling deeply, massively in love with the love of God that never fails. It is in this desert place that we can begin again, stripped back, grateful and full of prayer. We can be sure that the good news of Jesus starts in the darkest of places and will be carried into the next times. Remember, have we got to follow God or do we get to follow him? There can be no doubt that God is doing something new. Out of the global disaster will come a new way. And to some extent, we can see trends already, such as a re-evaluation of what it really matters to people. What really matters is from the importance of family, of a better work-life balance. And yet there is much to come we cannot know. I can tell you that agencies that require volunteers are overwhelmed by applications. People are realising there is more to life than self. Fresh expressions of church are popping up like mushrooms across the globe and there are hundreds if not thousands in the UK spreading the gospel by being the gospel. Countless millions are searching online for information about faiths and particularly prayer. Millions are forming online communities of faith all over the world. In our own early experiments on our own Facebook page, we attracted thousands of views. Yes, it does seem very strange to some of us, but it is a fact and God is in it. Out of the darkness of the desert, the light of Christ is shining brightly. The pandemic has forced us to break with our own much loved traditions and whether we like change or not, we've all learned new ways of communicating and hasn't that been amazing? However long we are forced to stay inside, the gospel message is spreading exponentially through word and through the world wide web. The gospel could, I suppose, be compared to an unstoppable virus, but this doesn't hurt, it heals, it doesn't destroy, it transforms. Yes, we feel trapped right now, trapped by the quarantine, but the word of God can never be trapped. 2 Timothy 2 to 9, and because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be chained. Even when Paul was imprisoned, the word of God could not be stopped. I believe we're living in a time when the gospel could spread faster and further than ever before because of the way so many have re-evaluated what really matters to them. In the early church, the gospel spread from Jerusalem to Rome in about 30 years without planes, trains or automobiles. In this age, the word can be spread globally instantly. I will end with this. We cannot take hold of the future if we are not prepared to let go of the past. Letting go can be extremely painful and difficult as we all value the security of what is familiar. Yet how exciting is it that we are all witnessing God forming something new? Not every generation can say that. So continue to pray and listen carefully for when he whispers the future. Amen. We've experimented today with some different things. 
and possibly stepped outside our comfort zone a little bit, but learning something new is rarely a bad thing. Jesus is calling us into the desert place. He is calling us to follow me into something new. Are you coming? We will finish with a prayer and then Joe has two video clips to show us. The first is a, a new film from Del Tata and it's made principally for those not familiar with Christianity but has a lot to say to us too. And the final song is much more familiar, Hillsong, singing How Great Is Our God. Let us pray. Father, thank you that in a world of despair, you are our hope. In a world of current darkness, you are our light. In a world of sorrow, you are our joy. Help us share the hope of our hearts with one another. Enable us to give hope to others through your work amongst us. Use us to transform our nation and to spread your hope to every corner. May our land flourish by the preaching of your word and the praising of your name. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of God be reflected in your words and the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Amen. Thank you for being here. Have a good week and God bless you.